Welcome to Bible Fiber. I am Shelley Neese, president of the Jerusalem Connection, a Christian organization devoted to sharing the story of the people of Israel, both ancient and modern. I've had the Bible Fiber episode on Nehemiah 13 written for weeks, but I have not had the power or will to release it as our regular scheduled Bible Fiber rollout. October 7th changed everything and nothing has felt regular or routine. Like any organization, we always have a monthly plan for our written and digital communications to our audience. With Bible Fiber, I have the great advantage of being able to plan even further out since the Bible never changes. But right now, even the words in the Bible are all framed through the horror and trauma of October 7th. My mind is unable to separate what is playing out in Israel from the words on the page in my Bible. The Psalms, Lamentations, and Ecclesiastes are especially hollering at me, pulsating with relevance in their call for vindication and judgment on Israel's enemies. They also provide comfort that the God of the Jewish people will not forsake or abandon them at this hour. The emotional whiplash of the prophets has never felt so appropriate to the national mood in Israel. Today, on my morning walk, I listened to a podcast interviewing Rachel Goldberg, the mother of Hirsch one of the young Israeli Americans that Hamas took hostage. Hirsch had been at the outdoor concert, which we now know was a Hamas death trap. He managed to escape the killing spree in the field and took safety with many others in a bomb shelter. Hamas terrorists, thorough in the murder spree, attacked the shelter with grenades, which Hirsch, sitting by the entrance, threw back out. His heroic self-sacrifice caused one arm from the elbow down to be blown off, which apparently he had the wherewithal to apply a tourniquet to. The only living eyewitnesses to the incident told Rachel, his mother, that the terrorists took Hirsch and drove off with him. Rachel explained to the interviewer how her life over the last 14 days had felt like she was in an alternate reality, not knowing if her son was alive or dead and trying to piece together the stories and clues of his capture. It hit me. The mother's name is Rachel. The literalness of the prophetic oracle made me lose my breath. The prophet Jeremiah 2,500 years ago lamented, a voice is heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel is weeping for her children. She refuses to be comforted for her children because they are no more. How many times must the Jewish people have to go through this? How many times do they have to witness their children die at the hands of their latest persecutors? I am praying to God to free Hirsch along with the other 200 innocents that Hamas is holding captive. In normal times, my heart is wrecked by even one child killed by terrorism, one parent taken from their family into captivity, or one grandmother struck by a rocket. These are not normal times, and my mind is haunted by all the stories and faces, and my chest feels like it is caving in from grief. The murderous Hamas attacks left thousands of Israelis dead, wounded, and grief-stricken. Like you, I am inundated with the stories of one tragedy after another as details of the October 7th terror campaign come to light. For the moment, much of the freedom-loving world recognizes Hamas's brutality as pure evil. They have no tolerance for the ISIS-style actions of Hamas terrorists as they blitzed unsuspecting Israeli southern towns, murdering innocents in a deliberate fashion everywhere they went. It moved me to see international signs of support across the world. Italy projected the flag of Israel onto the Arch of Titus in Rome. Germany illuminated the same on the Bradenburg Gate in Berlin. Two icons of past anti-Jewish horror were transformed into emblems of pro-Israel support. And yet we know from past Israel-Hamas wars that the world has little patience for Israel defending herself. Already, horrific anti-Semitic protests are erupting on America's college campuses and in our capital. Progressive activists and thought leaders are even praising these heinous acts. In the coming weeks, we will amplify our discussion of those domestic issues. But right now, I don't care to give them any attention at all. I don't want to even do the honor of acknowledging their grotesque 
equivocation between Hamas killing babies and Israel's right for retaliation. But I do want to thank all of you, our faithful Jerusalem Connection supporters. From the beginning, you have remained faithful, despite the world's opinion or even the beliefs of your friends and neighbors. Israel is now looking to us to be a voice in their defense. We must stand by Israel. We must help Israel reinforce her borders and rebuild security for her citizens, which can only happen by toppling Hamas. Israel issued the largest call-up of reservists in its history, 330,000. Many of my Israeli friends have a child who has been called to join the fight. I can only imagine their fear mixed with pride as they fulfill the original promise of the state of Israel to be a place where Jews will be safe from murderous hatred. So how can you help? First, I would say pray without ceasing in groups and as individuals. The IDF is fighting a physical war and we must help them fight the spiritual war. Second, read and pray the Psalms. The script for what Israel is enduring today is already written in our Holy Scriptures. Look for God's eternal truths, claims, and promises for Israel and the Jewish people. Third, call or write your elected officials. Remind them that your vote is tied to their support for Israel, and you are watching and paying attention. Stay informed and be ready to combat anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism with the facts. Lastly, consider offering material support. Last month, before we could even imagine the coming needs of the IDF, we developed a partnership with a group called Israel's Defense and Security Forum. That partnership was the subject of our last letter, and it is even more pertinent now. To donate to support the IDSF, please go to our website, thejerusalemconnection.us, click on Projects, and then click on Support IDSF. I will resume Bible Fiber next week, and we will close out Nehemiah. At least I think I can hardly talk about anything other than the present day. But I hope together we will continue to mine the scriptures for answers, comfort, prayers, and hope. Am Israel Chai, the people of Israel live.